Hello gang, uh, Listen Chump here, and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how I made that weird gif. I'm guessing nobody's asking questions about how I did the Photoshop stuff, which was pretty much just kind of color correction and shrinking down Kim Jong, but rather how I make it zoom in and out and all that stuff. So, after you save out an image like this in Photoshop, pop over to After Effects, and then drop the image of Kim Jong in at full resolution, and do a bunch of keyframes. All right, so I got a keyframe for a mask that's kind of feathered out. You can't see it from here. I got a keyframe for the position, scale, rotation, and how opaque this image is. All right. Then <laughs> I skipped ahead, and I just kind of shrunk this thing down so that it'd be the same size as the one I photoshopped in earlier to that still image and the same rotation, all that stuff, except by this point the opacity of this image has gone down. So it's down to zero right here. Um, and by adding a bunch of keyframes at this point, it makes it so that I would zoom in or zoom out from Kim Jong, depending on how you look at it. But how do we make it so this big guy ends up changing with it? The trick to that is just parenting it, so I ended up using the pick whip here, and all I did was go to this point and then say that this uh, little Kim layer up here is going to be the parent for this smaller one, and as a result you can see that the larger image scales with it and rotates into place. And beyond that I just turned on motion blur, cranked out a video, and went back into Photoshop, and in Photoshop I was able to just make it so that that point where it's zoomed in all the way and zoomed out all the way lasted longer than the other frames just to make the GIF a little bit smaller in file size. Once you have the timeline looking good in Photoshop, go up to File, Save for Web, and uh, you know, you're in business.